The thing about being in transition as an Enneagram 3 achiever is that there are just too many options. How do you stop thinking of all the options out there? I was kind of caught up in that this morning. I was listening to Stacey Bowman on life coaching and how to be an amazing million dollar coach. Then I was listening to this producer teaching how to do R&B chords and beats. So I did that. Then I was thinking about a podcast that I'm producing and how to scale that. And it just, and then yesterday I had a Zoom call about some other stuff. It's too many things, too many things to try to be awesome at, to try to do, period. Now, as an Enneagram 3, where does that come from as a person in transition, going from a traditional job of 30 years to an entrepreneurial uh, season? Well, it comes from fear. It comes from this fear that I have to have so many, I have to have 50 plates spinning in order to be safe and to feel safe. And that's the biggest lie. And yet, you know what? It's not always a lie. When I had my traditional job, my corporate job, as people call it, (laughs) I was afraid of what happened. Like Job, right? Job often said that he feared the very thing that happened to him, which was that he lost everything. Now, what was Job's, I guess, result or what did he get out of worrying? I guess to prove himself right, because it still happened. And he still had to struggle and fight, argue with God. And then God rewarded him because at the end of the day, Job, I would say he was patient, right? I think that's the lesson there. So what do I get out of spinning so many plates? Well, here's the thing. First, experience. I'm not spinning too many plates. I will do it back to the Enneagram 3, the one-to-one, kind of this wanting to win or do everything I will do it for the first maybe 10 minutes or even a week or even months. But then eventually I'll say, no, that's not me. So even with the whole R&B chords, I could spend maybe three months, and I have actually done that, maybe not three months, but a few weeks learning R&B chords. I can do it. I just made a beat this morning. Maybe if you want to check it out, you can go to my YouTube. It sounds good, but it's just not natural. It's not my zone of genius, my zone of... Yeah, of genius, right? It's a zone of average, of competence, I guess. Now, why do I want to make R&B chords or why do, why do I want to do all of that? Well, because I think, well, then maybe I'll sell more beats. Well, why do I have to sell beats to be successful? Because that's what people do or that's what this video showed or whatever, right? Well, or that's what I think I should do. Well, what if instead I do what I actually love to do, which is to teach the Bible, teach production, teach voice, teach coaching, and forget about R&B chords. (laughs) Yesterday, I had a session with some amazing friends and a young man that came along, he was asking about production and this and that. And so I just simply explained to him a few things about EQ and compression and, and gain staging. And he was, wow. And then I made the offer, not to him, he's a young man, but just to the, the, the friend he was with, who's an adult, about teaching production. Now, I didn't make an actual, an actual uh, offer. Like I didn't say I teach six weeks for $100 a session, which maybe I should have. I'm still getting good. I'm still getting, I'm trying to improve and get better at the PSPR kind of model, which is problem, solution, process, and result. I think that's PSPR. And so I'm still, I still need to get more, more easy, more verbal, more, more uh, comfortable with my offer as far as weeks and, and not so much the price, but what do you get out of it? What are you going to learn? Right. So anyway, My point is that that's actually more in line with what I love to do. Same as, same thing goes with teaching the Bible. I want to, and I am hopefully soon, going to be teaching more Bible classes online. And so that's something I love to do. And that also is a way to make money and to create income without doing a million things. And so... Sometimes I think the worry and the fear that sets in 
for me, it's out of, or the overwhelm, it's, it's all together, right? It's wanting to be good at everything. It's fear, fear that I'm going to lose something and lose it all that comes from trauma and blah, blah, blah. It's not true. I'm safe and secure in God's hands and he's providing and he always provides. And I think also it comes from just being an Enneagram 3. It comes from being an Enneagram 3 where I want to be good at everything. And that's okay, but but if it distracts you from the thing that I'm supposed to be doing with my life, then it's not good. And so the good news is that I realize that more and more. And then I just simply step away from it and say, okay, I don't have to go do it. I don't have to go and be an R&B piano player. <laughs> it's silly, right? Or even an amazing beat. I'm an amazing beat maker, an, an amazing R&B beat maker. I can just make beats that I love, that are natural to me, which is more lo-fi and whatever. I guess trap and that kind of stuff. And so it's about minimizing the options and then saying no to things. So yesterday I did have, well, I had a Zoom interview yesterday and then I had a Zoom. Yeah, I guess I had two Zoom interviews Monday, today is Wednesday, right? Monday and Tuesday. Shout out, by the way, to my beautiful sister, Marcia. Today is Wednesday, December December 14th. And so today is her birthday. Happy birthday, my sister. I love you so much. I miss you. And so even in those two interviews, the first one I think I'm going to say no to, even though it might be more, more safe or more, more possible, more stable even. The second one... I don't have that. I don't have. I don't have an offer from. Well, I guess I did get an offer from the first one, sort of. The second one, I don't have an offer yet. It was just more of a like a pool interview, and so now we have to apply. And so, but from what this recruiter was saying, it seems like I would get the job because of my credentials. Blah. blah. So, assuming that, I thought, which of those two do I actually want to do? Back to the Enneagram three, right? We deceive ourselves into thinking that we're amazing at everything and we want everything and everything is good for us, which actually comes out of fear and worry. Well, I want to do the second thing. Guess what the second one's about? Teaching, <laughs> duh, back to who am I? Teaching, coaching, music, worship, the church, Jesus, right? People, discipleship coaching, all of these things are all the same thing, right? It's just as hard for God, a heart for people and to teach. And so the second one is to be a substitute teacher. And so I thought, again, I haven't gotten the job and it's only, it's a substitute. So it's kind of when I, whenever I want to teach, which is great for my schedule and my new mosaic lifestyle. So I thought, okay, now the first one is also kind of a pay as you go kind of thing, but it's more entrepreneurial. And as I said, I think yesterday, I don't want more entrepreneurial ideas. I already have 50 of them. I'm trying to eliminate entrepreneurial things. And I just want to go and do something and get a paycheck, even if it's just a thousand bucks, whatever. Right. The other thing, by the way, is an update is I did follow through on my on looking for help for this one project that I have that is scaling ish, beginning to scale. And there's this part, the video editing part, that I really don't like doing. And so I did reach out to a friend who is good at that. And so we kind of worked out a deal. And so we're going to see how that goes. So I'm very proud of myself for doing that. Back to the, the podcast I was listening to with Stacy Bowman about coaching. The thing that is overwhelming about listening to so much content is that you feel, at least back to being a three, you feel like you have to do it all. And right now. So I get so inundated with so many things that she says that are amazing and true and awesome. And I think, well, I just can't do all of that. I mean, it's just too many things. I'm not even there. You know, she's talking about a million dollar company, 10 million, even $200,000. I'm not there as my, as a company. But of course, her techniques are, are amazing. And I know they will work. I just have to, I guess, take a little bit at a time and just not get overwhelmed with it. And so that's very important for us threes is to not get overwhelmed. So one of the things I was learning from this life coaching podcast with Stacey Bowman is about what she calls PSPR. And I guess I want to go through that a little bit to explain to you and to myself, what is it that I do with coaching and what are the results that you can expect if you work with me? So PSPR, problem, solution, 
process results and then she adds value at the end psprv value and so what that means is that as a coach you have to be clear on what the people a person's problem or the people's problem is or are then you have to provide a clear and new she says a new and different solution then you have to create or explain a clear process and then tell people the expected and clear results that they will get out of it and the value that they will gain even beyond their own expectations very much like that verse about how god will give us immeasurably more above and beyond what we can ever dream or imagine so very similar to that verse this is really what we're offering is is um, we're selling dreams as people say right we're selling you a dream to be happy and so for me the problem and who do i speak to i speak to people at midlife in their 30s maybe 40s that are maybe 50s that are going through a major life transition and their problem is that they feel lost they feel confused they feel marihundo, as I like to say it in Spanish. They feel out at sea. It's almost like they're out at sea and they knew where they were going, but then a storm came and now the sea is just floating. And you feel scared and lost. And like you're doing a million things, but you have no real passion or direction. You're busy, but you're not focused. You're trusting God, but you are filled with fear and worry. And so that's, that problem causes a lot of, it can be depression, anxiety, worry, overthinking. As one friend called it, being on the hamster wheel. For me, it feels like overdoing, like constant worrying, like even thinking, where are you, God? Are you, do you even care about me? Maybe even saying, you don't care. So that's the problem that I see in, in the world today as far as the people that I speak to. And then the solution, P.S., a solution is what I call the happiness curve. And this is based on a book called The Happiness Curve, but I've made it my own. That is a combination of the Enneagram, the happiness curve, and the Sedona method. So I have my own kind of combination of those three tools, as well as actually the big leap, I guess you could, you could say, but certainly the first three, the happiness curve, which... It explains to to you, the person, how this is very normal and how you have to kind of just put yourself in the story of God, of what he's doing in your life and how this transition is meant to be. And it's supposed to, or it's it just will always feel, not always, but it will feel like you're lost. This is part of the, the journey, what some people call the dark night of the soul or the desert experience or Gethsemane, the atonement, all of these metaphors is what it feels like and so the process ps or the solution is the happiness curve which explains to you or i help you understand where you're at on that journey of the curve towards happiness the pro ps solution right and so the solution is the happiness the process is we meet is we meet twice a week for six months to go through the happiness curve in your life to put yourself in the story of what God is doing is to actually kind of almost like describe or to plot your life as far as where you've been the last, I would say, seven to 10 years and to see some patterns and to see where you began this, what I call the downward journey, but then it goes up again. And where you're at in that process, where you're at in that journey, what are you feeling? What are the the pressures that you feel? What started this? Was it a divorce? Was it a a firing? Was it a loss of a job or a friend? Was it something in your family or your health, perhaps something that triggered this this happiness curve, kind of a descend into the abyss, and then of course the upward movement towards towards joy or towards what the Sedona method calls the beginning of happiness and the end of suffering. So that's PSP, that's the process. We meet once a week, excuse me, twice a week, and we then have different charts and we have a process of putting yourself in the story and giving you perspective and hope. And then the result is you're going to be at a better place where your life truly will be happy. 
and will be different. You won't be the same person that you were before. You'll have the same values. You'll have the same principles. You will hang on to, of course, all that really matters to you, your faith, your family, love, helping people. But you will learn how to have an income once again. Maybe you, you, you did change careers and now you're thinking, how do I do this? How do I remain? How do I keep um, money flowing in? And so you will have a, a new life in terms of your career, your path. You will be true, truer to yourself in terms of your career and the people that you want to work with and not want to work with. The environments and maybe even the office dynamics that you don't want and you do want, you will be at a place where things fit you like a glove. It'll be more natural for you. You won't have to work as hard to make a living and to, and to survive. You will feel more at peace and more at ease. And I always like to say to people, when you get to this place, which is where I'm at now, I'm just beginning to now explore more of this, is, is what Jesus says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is what it feels like right now for me. It's, I'm just beginning. I'm just starting this new, this new season, but it, it's beginning to feel a lot like Christmas. It's beginning to feel like this yoke is easy and this burden is light. It's still a burden. It's still a yoke, but it's easy. Whereas before it was an unbearable burden, an unbearable yoke. And the value to you is happiness, is less stress, is you being able to, like my wife says, I have time in my brain or I have space in my brain to actually travel and to enjoy my life and not be so stressed about everything at work or at home or with my life in general. That is the unexpected value that you, that will come to you. It's Not only will it be a financial thing, but actually what I have experienced and I'm learning and teaching is that the financial isn't really the point. It's more the opportunities, the happiness, the joy. Joy, happiness, the fruits of the Spirit, peace. That's what I'm noticing that happens to people that I work with. They're experiencing more of what really matters in life. Peace. To be able to travel, we just came back from Italy. We went to Hawaii twice this year. We're going to Oregon. We've been to Oregon. We're going to be, we're going to, we traveled six times this year, twice to Oregon, twice to Hawaii, I guess five, and then one to Italy. And while our daughter went to Italy, you could say, well, no, not twice. Yeah. So we, she went and we went. So we had six times where we traveled as a family just in 12 months. I mean, amazing, amazing peace, amazing joy, amazing memories. That's the value to you. That's what you will get out of this process as we work together. And as I said, it takes six months. I mean, it could take a year. There's two really levels, six months and 12 months. Most people, I think at least six months. I would say if you're really amazing, six months. If you're normal like me, 12 months. It took me 10 years because it, the, the counseling that I was getting wasn't as focused. It wasn't coaching. It was more counseling, which was important for me. This is not count, counseling. Though. This is coaching, which is more forward thinking. This is more, how do I get through this curve? How do I get through this hamster wheel, this, this spinning of my, my mind is just spinning. I don't know where I'm going. I just feel like I, I had someone tell me it's been 10 years since my father died that I have felt like I am just at sea, just lost at sea, just floating, just, just, I'm doing a lot of things, but I have no real fire in my, in my belly, no real direction, no real passion, no real focus. And that's what you get on the other side of this training, out of this process is you, you feel more focused, you feel more like yourself. And as I said, you have peace and, and joy and happiness. <laughs> And these things that we all long, especially as we age and as we have all this wisdom and experience and strength, and we don't want to just give it to some job or to some thing that, or some personal relationship that isn't really even us anymore. Instead, imagine you being on the other side and saying, man, I am blessed. I mean, this is how I feel. My wife, our kids traveling six times in one year and, and being able to still deal with difficult things like my father-in-law who's going through things. Being able to go up there with him and serve him and love him and having the energy and the strength and the stamina inside of us as a family to go and be there for him and to be there for each other and to be there for my church. That's the value. That's the result. That's the joy. And that's what, that's why I'm here. 
on this earth is to disciple, to coach, to help people through this process that I have been through the last 10 years that I am coming out of. Now maybe a step or two ahead and I want to just reach back and give you a hand and help you get to that place. And you don't have to be even like at 30 or 30s or 40s. I feel like people in their 20s, I'm finding they're dealing with the same kind of issues that we uh, of the previous generations dealt with in our 40s. I find that people in their 20s, especially 25, 24, 25, 27, 28, as they approach 30, they're beginning to think and to worry about these, the same things that we worried about at 45 or 50. So you might be someone that's at quarter life, as I say, and you're having a quarter life happiness curve that's happening. You're, something needs to change, and you're a woman of faith, a man of God, you're serving all the right things. You're not out there destroying your life, but there's something still that you're thinking, man, how am I going to get there? I need coaching. I need help. I need someone who's been there, who's done that, who has experience. And so I'm certified as a coach. I obviously am a licensed pastor. I'm also a, a seminarian and a licensed, as I said, yeah, coach and minister. And most of all, I, I feel like God can use me in your life to help you come to this better place where you aren't spinning anymore, where you're no longer at sea, and now you can actually land the plane and come to this beautiful place of peace, this beautiful place called Gozo, which I like to call it. Gozo blah right there. This place of joy and peace in Christ. So that's a little bit of what I'm learning and what I offer. I would love to talk to you before the end of the year. We have, what, 16, 17 days left. I'd love to talk to you before the, the year ends so we can get at least one session. The, the prices are $100 for one session a week for six months, or what I recommend is 75 twice a week for six months. And if you sign up for a whole year, of course, we have deals and payment plans and all that stuff so that you can be in this university called Gozo for at least six months to a year. And I think God will do amazing things in your life. I eventually will move to group coaching. So take advantage of this now because right now I'm doing one-on-one -on -one coaching, which is amazing because you're getting 45 minutes twice a week of one-on-one -on -one coaching through Zoom. We can meet, we can talk on the phone. And eventually I'm going to move to group coaching. And eventually, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe in the next six months, I'm going to go to, to courses so that I can teach all these principles to thousands and millions of people. But right now, we're just getting started, and I'd love to help you one-on-one. -on -one. So hit me up, trig at davidtrig.com. The phone numbers are at the bottom of this uh, screen or this, uh, this content. Or you can go to my Instagram and DM me there at David Trig. And so I'd love to help you. Thanks again, thanks again for being here. I am wishing you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I would love to, as I said, work with you this year. Thanks again for being here, and I will see you next time. Adios. Everything that I do or you say is no good